frame elements. Let's start with Fillmore's definition of frames. Frames are any system of concepts related in such a way that to understand any of them, you have to understand the whole structure in which it fits. Now, what are those concepts? In FrameNet, each of them is defined as one of the participants or props in the frame. In other words, each concept is a frame element. Some frame elements in FrameNet can be named in a way similar to traditional semantic or theta roles, such as agent, patient, and theme. However, they are frame-specific. This means that each frame element is proposed in a way relevant to one specific frame. So, it is pretty common to find frame elements named as buyer, seller, goods, and money in the commercial transaction frame. Each frame element also features a short definition. The definition is usually built to emphasize how a frame element relates to the others in the scene. Returning to the commercial transaction frame, the four elements listed before are defined as such. Buyer. The buyer wants the goods and offers money to a seller in exchange for them. Seller. The seller has possession of the goods and exchanges them for money from a buyer. Goods. The frame element goods is anything, including labor or time, for example, which is exchanged for money in a transaction. Money. Money is the thing given in exchange for goods in a transaction. The way frame elements are defined is key when it comes to analyzing whether a given lexical unit belongs to the frame or not. Consider the Finnish competition frame, for example. In this frame, elements are defined as competition, competitor, and opponent. They are not defined as competition, winner, and loser. This is what makes it possible to have antonymous verbs, such as win and lose, evoking this same frame. If the elements were defined as winner and loser, we would need to have two perspectivized versions of finishing competition, namely the winning and the losing frames. Frame elements can have different statuses in a frame. Some of them are mandatory for the frame to be present, while some contribute circumstantial information to the frame. Let's look at another example. Imagine you want to create a frame representing the background scene against which the meaning of English verbs such as awake and wake up is to be defined. Such a scene would necessarily involve a main character, the sleeper. It would also refer to the state they were in at the time the event indicated by the verb happened. Let's call it the sleep state. Those two, the sleeper and the sleep state, are the core frame elements in the waking up frame. Core frame elements define the frame and can even establish relations among each other. Now, the waking up frame inherits the event frame. Let's look at this frame now. Note that event has three core frame elements, place, time, and event. However, this last one is a special type of element. It's a core unexpressed frame element. This notation designates a core frame element in a frame that may not be expressed in the frames inheriting it. This is precisely the case with the waking up frame, which does not feature an event core frame element. This is so because the whole waking up frame is the event. Let's take a look at its non-core frame elements. A non-core frame element is not mandatory for the frame to be instantiated. It can be further classified in peripheral or extra thematic. Unlike core, peripheral frame elements do not define the frame and can be instantiated in several frames. They indicate notions such as time, place, manner, means, and so on. Peripheral frame elements are usually correlated to the type of frame they occur in. So, 
Frame elements such as time and place tend to occur in frames representing events, while the descriptor tends to occur in frames for entities. In the waking up frame, peripheral frame elements include manner, place, and time. Note that for this frame to be evoked in a sentence, we do need the sleeper and the sleep state to be mentioned, or at least inferable, such as in Bob woke up from his nap. And we can add circumstantial information about the waking up event, such as in Bob woke up from his nap very abruptly. Manner. Bob woke up from his nap at his dad's house. Place. Bob woke up from his nap at 1 p.m. Time. Finally, an extra thematic frame element situates an event against the background of another state of affairs. It introduces an independent scene rather than more information about the frame evoked by the lexical unit. They are usually introduced by language material that is conventionally associated with their meaning. For example, the frequency frame element in the waking up frame specifies the number of times an event occurs per some unit of time. This happens in all other eventive frames. The frequency frame element is usually instantiated by adverbs evoking the frequency frame such as in Bob rarely, often, seldom, always wakes up from his nap before 2 p.m. Extra thematic frame elements are related to a diversity of state of affairs. Extra thematic frame elements can add information about temporal structure, place, participants, additional participants, co-occurring events and circumstances. Although this list is not exhaustive, it gives a broad overview of their uses.